Uh, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on PLOS TV Africa to our first major conversation for the day. Ahead of the upcoming general elections, renowned legal luminary Dr. Olisa Agbakoba has raised some poses over a proviso within the constitution regarding the election of a president. This was contained in a letter addressed to the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, dated January 17. In his review, as contained in the letter, Dr. Agbakoba raised some questions about sections 134, subsection 1b and 2b. He wondered if two-thirds of all the states in the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, does not mean uh, either, or does that mean either of the following, that the presidential candidate must score not less than one quarter of the vote cast at the election in each of at least two-thirds of all the states in the Federation, which means 24 states, that the 24 state will include the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, as a state. Or, he's asking the second part, that the presidential candidate must score not less than one quarter of the vote cast at the election in each of at least two-thirds of all the states in the Federation, which means 24 states, and in addition to meeting the one-quarter requirement in 24 states, a candidate must also win one-quarter of the vote cast in the federal capital territory. We have a legal practitioner joining us now to make some sense to all of this. Let's make welcome and make up well. Many thanks for joining us, Barry Stockmar. Good morning. Thank you. Yes, it is indeed a pleasure. Let's try to make some sense because when you talk so much legalese, it gets a bit confusing for, you know, not just, uh, you know, even the learned as it were, even to the average Nigerian. What exactly is the Constitution saying, that particular section and subsection? Is Abuja now a state of the Federation or the, uh, two, uh, the, the two third actually means just uh, the 36th state of the Federation and you also have to win uh, two third because there's a bit of uh, back and forth and most people are not clear. It is even, it is even wonderful that uh, uh, SAN uh, Agbakuda raised that um, question or pose uh, yesterday. How do you reason all of that? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to address the issue as to whether the uh, federal capital territory is a state. There is no doubt about that, that the Constitution never contemplated the federal capital territory as a state in any way. Now, Section 3 defines the states. I mean, it states what the states are. There are a lot of differences you find in the constitution, all over the constitution, between the states and the federal capital territory. For example, in every state, there is a, a capital provided in the constitution, what is called the capital city. Section 3 of the constitution names 36 states. It, does, it didn't say, it doesn't say, 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 say 34, uh, 37. It says 36. Um, Further down on that section, section uh, three, subsection four, it specifically defines the federal capital territory separately. So it does not include the federal capital territory. Does not include is not included among the states of the federation. Now you also see that in the constitution, the states are divided into local governments, and you have the local governments with their headquarters. But the federal capital, the, the, the constitution itself says that the, 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 the federal capital territory is divided into area councils. Now, the federal capital territory does not have a capital within that federal capital territory. You know, while the states have their capitals. So you see, and there are a lot of other, other um, differences that occur in the constitution that makes one understand that there was never a contemplation in the constitution to make uh, the federal capital territory a state or to regard it as a state. Um, one of one again one example um, again is that uh, the the, um, the 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 laws of the states 
are made by state houses of assemblies. The National Assembly actually makes laws for the federal capital territory. So you can see there are a lot of differences here. Now, coming down to section 134, we we'll have to look at that section specifically on its own. Now, that section does not call the federal capital territory a state, but it includes it in the computation of whether a, a presidential candidate has reached the threshold required by the Constitution. So when it says the states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory, the Federal Capital Territory will be treated as the 36, 37th number among the numbers to be included. Not as a state, not to call it a state, but if for the purpose of that, the interpretation of that section, we decide to call it a state, so be it. But okay, it's not a state, on, Barista, but it Barista, is Barista, not... I want, to, I want to try and understand. So if we are trying to compute uh, what actually uh, determines two-thirds, are we computing two-thirds of 37, or we will uh, do two-thirds of the 36 states, then uh, eventually uh, look for two-thirds again of... Uh, the FCT, or exactly yeah. how are you interpreting it, it right now? Literally, you know, there are in in uh, in interpretation of laws, there are rules, and the number one is the literal interpretation when it's very clear that this is the these are this the meaning of these words, and uh, it will not conflict with the purpose of the legislation. You go with the literal interpretation. You interpret it li literally. Now, on the one hand, if we look at the literal interpretation, we will talk of two thirds of 37. It's very clear there. Two thirds of 37 is meant there. However, however, the court, if it comes before the court, may have to go beyond the literal interpretation. And the reason is that we have to ask ourselves what was the purpose of that? that particular provision. Now, we have what is called the purposive rule of interpretation, which is the current way of interpreting, interpreting legislations. We also have uh, what is called the mischief rule. Now, in the mischief rule, we ask ourselves, what was the mischief that was existing that this particular legislation is intended to cure? That is the mischief rule. And then we interpret the law in such a way as to do away with the mischief and advance the remedy. That is the, 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 the rule of interpretation here. Now, what was the mischief that this particular section is intended to cure? The thing is to make sure that the president that will come out of the election is a president that is accepted uh, with a geographical spread, not just a section or maybe a few sections of the of the of the country of the whole federation, not just he could get the numbers from one or two sections. That's the total number, but does not satisfy the geographical geographical spread. The constitution wants to um, prevent a situation. He will be a localized president acting for the whole federation. That was that's the purpose. Now, if you look at the making of the federal capital territory, the federal capital territory is supposed to be a melting pot. It wasn't actually intended to give it a sectional slant in any way, the federal capital territory. It's supposed to be, it was initially actually conceived as a mayor, mayorality. And you find out that Despite the politics that got involved along the line, we still have uh, much of the intentment of creating the federal capital territory uh, in the Constitution. Now, if you look at all these, you may be tempted to say that, no, it is not two-thirds of 37, but two-thirds of 36, and maybe two-thirds 
or the federal capital territory. Uh, but the... if you look at the federal capital territory, the federal capital territory, you cannot say that this is a section of the federal capital territory where people from such and such uh, 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 sections of the country, that's where they, are, they, they, they reside more. Uh, this part is for this other part. This part is for Yoruba mm -hmm. or Igbo mm -hmm. and all that. If you look at it like that, so I think somehow mm -hmm. what uh, the learned uh, luminary Abakoba raised is actually a very important issue. Uh, I, th I think subsequently they may have to look at this and remove the federal capital ter territory from the contemplation here. Okay. But now that it's but but, but I, I like I like us to talk about you know because in all of this you said we're looking at interpretation of the law at the end of the day and you have said that in its literal sense it should be uh, two third of thirty seven, right? And exactly. So I'm asking you if that's the literal interpretation since the inception of our democracy from 1999 up until this moment, have we considered? Uh, that literal interpretation in terms of compute, uh, you know, computing in the in the system, computation, two third of thirty seven. Has that been the interpretation? Well, um, what we had in what we have in uh, in the uh, in 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 our laws. I mean, in the. Uh, our court's um, records, what we have as precedents now uh, existed before we had 36 states and the FCT. Um, we, there was the case between uh, Awolo and Shagari. And there was also an interpretation, a, a problem there in interpreting two thoughts because the mm -hmm. um, the number of states at that time could not be easily could not be easily divided without a remainder with, uh, divided into three without a remainder and if you put the literal interpretation we are talking about now if you make the federal capital territory the 37th number as we are advocating, if we have to go by the literal interpretation, we will have that problem. But then, the court will find a way to solve that problem. So, if it means exactly two thirds of 37, or two thirds of 36 <laughs> states, and then two thirds of the federal capital territory, I think they, that will not be beyond the court. Uh Whichever uh, way. Uh, Emeka, uh, so let's, you know, try to get it, you know, it's a real sense. And we're trying to understand the concerns that uh, Bakuba has raised. And also looking at it as, as it is, what is, in its literal sense, is very literal. And I'm sure that is not, uh, you know, back and forth. You have said it, you, you, you didn't have to be in the court to say this. You say that's what it means in its literal sense. So my question is, have we respected this in its literal sense? Has there been an interpretation in the course of our elections? Have we counted two third of thirty seven, or are we doing two third of thirty six? Well, we have never been in a situation where, uh, from the results release, mark my words, from the results release uh, that we we are in doubt as to the winner um <laughs> the, the, the winner <laughs> the winner had always surpassed uh the the need to try to find out whether he went beyond uh, two thoughts of 36 or even two thoughts of 38 uh, 37 uh, he, he, he the winner had always, from the resource release, had always won convincingly that he surpassed two thoughts, whichever way you want to look at it. But I think the concern of the learned senior advocate is that in a situation like we have now, we had, there may occur a situation that we may not be too certain 
we may be at the threshold of somebody not satisfying maybe two thoughts of 36 and maybe satisfying two thoughts of 37 or thereabout. If we are at that point, then I think what you and I are saying here may only guide as a, as, uh, be as a guide. It will ultimately end up in court. And I think the Supreme Court will be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I think that you're not losing us because the Supreme Court is say that you're losing us, but we're with you. No, and we continue. follow every bit of what you're saying. But, but the question I am still asking, uh, now that you have said what you have said, do you think that in all of this, in our computation, we have considered uh, all of the process as two-thirds of 37? Whether or not the winner wins with, you know, high margin high or no, low no margin, slide and, and not yeah. wanting to, we don't have to go back to that. So my point is, do you think that we have considered, Einek in her computation, have con I don't know why I'm saying her, have considered, you know, two-third of 37, or was doing two-third of 36 or even less? I, I think uh, the, the legal department of INEC, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, and their advisors. <laughs> so I think you are now. trying to be politically correct this morning. We all right. will get your point. All right, all right, all right, Barista. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Advise INEC appropriately. All right, Barista. That, that, that it has to be two thoughts of 37. All right, we expect we INEC and its own legal department to just come with some sort of explanation and interpretation to that particular uh, provision. But I still want to talk, um, let's move away just slightly from um, Agba Kuba. I know Olani Kweku was also in the news uh, yesterday, and uh, he was also talking about some particular section of the Electoral Act. And he feels, uh, let me see if I can quote some of the things he said. He said that section 64 of uh, 65, rather, of the Electoral Act also raises uh, concerns. Uh, he says uh, it is uh, seemingly uh, given so much powers to the returning officer uh, at polling units. We just want to get your quick um, interpretation to that. Section 64. Yes, please. On of um, the Electoral Act. Sorry. On, on um, and, and that's on this, uh, dissolution and the uh, issue of uh, proclamation by the by uh, by the president. Well, um, the I think the 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 I I, I do not think that um, that particular this issue raise uh, any issue. The thing is that the 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 any house of national as the national assembly will complete its term and it is the president that has been sworn in at that time that should pro, uh, proclaim uh, Barisak, but i'm not uh, sure you actually got the question correctly i was talking about um, the concerns olanik Beko raised concerning section 65 of the electoral act we're talking about the elections no, I, 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 65 of the electoral that. act yes please okay Uh, on on issue of uh, is it um, a membership because returning uh, officers returning officers uh, you know our our, our Baku is actually uh, raising concerns and he's saying that the polls are under threat because of the powers of uh, returning officers and specifically he was mentioned section or he mentioned section sixty five of the electoral act. Well, section okay section sixty five. Of the electoral, electoral act. act, we're talking about the electoral act this morning. Oh, oh, okay. Well, the 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 powers given to the um, the given to the returning officer uh, in the electoral act are not they are not uh, beyond understanding, and uh, I don't think there is any controversy uh, there. The thing is that the returning officer has to, from the results that has come. The returning officer will declare the result. That is the point. And when this is done, whichever part person or candidate is aggrieved, party or candidate, well, knows what to do. But then I do not think that the powers are so much that um, uh, it is beyond uh, ordinary interpretation or that it raises a controversy. That is my 
uh, take on that particular. Uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, it may uh, appear that the powers are so much, but then it is somebody, it is the returning officer that has to uh, make the declaration as to who uh, won the election and has to uh, decide uh, based on the computation before him of the uh, different units of the of the uh, of, of that particular state or the federation, and then be able to say this is this is the the final result uh, from this state, from this local government, from this uh, from the federation. This is the final result, and this is the winner. Okay, so um, in this case, uh, Agbakoba has raised a concern and. I'd like to ask you, what do you think that INEC should do? I'm, I'm not, I know that you're not a, a legal practitioner, or you're not holding brief for no, INEC. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm saying you're not a legal practitioner for INEC, but I'm saying, what would you advise? I mean, is there anything that can be done in this particular case, looking at the fact that the election's very close? We're looking at the 25th of February uh, and also the 11th of March 2023. That's on one hand. I'll allow you to answer that, and then, of course, we'll get to the second part of it. Well, uh, I, I think the the minds of the operators uh, in INEC, uh, I think their minds have been juggled now uh, on this particular issue. Uh, they should prepare for it. They should make sure they do their computations uh, right. I, I would advise tutors of 37. I would. It is very clear there. Uh, notwithstanding whatever we may have in mind, uh, it will be, it will be, uh, remember that the other side, which is uh, two thirds of 36 and then two thirds of the federal capital territory, is actually the, the kind of, uh, is more or less similar, but not exactly the same, to what was used in the controversial Awolowo versus Shagari case. So we if should. Saying, if you are saying two third uh, of thirty-seven, uh, by two third of uh, thirty-seven is twenty-four and some decimal. How do we begin to calculate all of that? Two third doesn't give you a round number. It's not twenty-four outright. So twenty-four point. They, 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 they could do it by approximation. Uh, so <laughs> they still come back to twenty-four. Approximation uh, twenty-four point zero one to <laughs> twenty-five. Two thoughts, two thoughts by a mathematics, two thoughts of a figure can be approximated to a whole figure. So if we, have, if we have 24 point something and it gets up to half, it definitely we are talking about 25. And I, I do not even think <laughs> that we'll come to this uh, uh, mathematical I do not think we'll come to it. But then it's good that we prepare for it. And the minds of uh, at uh, INEC have now been adv adverted to this particular issue, and they should prepare for it. So, so just quickly, I mean, we're being prompted to leave now, but in a few seconds, hopefully, you're able to answer this. Don't you think that this is not? I mean, there's always something to say uh, politically correct, and so in this sense, is this democratically right? 36 states, including the FCT, 37, you say that's the literal interpretation. Okay. You do the statistics, we're having 24, and then there should be an approximation, 25. Does it even make sense in a democratic dispensation? And what's the implication mm -hmm. of all of this computation and the concerns that Agbakova has raised for the 2023 elections? It, 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 to me, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, even if we exclude, because of the nature of the federal capital territory, which is what I will advocate, um, in the next dispensation, uh, when they come to, for, to a constitutional amendment, to remove the federal capital territory completely out of the computation because of the nature of the FCT, because of the nature. If we put it, then we will not have this interpretation problem. Somebody who has won 24 out of, if you call it 37, whether you call it states or the taxi states and the federal capital, 24 out of 37, I think the person would have done well. And the person, uh, the thing will not depend on his or her broad-mindedness in understanding that the whole country is his, his or her constituents. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> okay, well, right, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Alpara. Well, that's as much as we can take. It is actually a very, very, you know,
mind-boggling, uh, you know, computation as it is. We have to do the maths as it were. I'm sure Ime could be responding to that in a matter of uh, maybe today or in the co uh, coming days. We must say a very big thank you to you, Ime Kwakwara, legal practitioner, for the thoughts that you have shared with us this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Then uh, that's the size of it. Uh, we'll take a break, and when we return, we'll be looking at uh, our next conversation. Please don't miss.